I fell in love with my straight roommate. Bye, my sister Gabby shouted as I sat in the car to go to my new college outside my hometown, St. Mark High. Even though she wasn't so excited about me leaving home, she pretended to be happy so it wouldn't spoil my mood for the new journey. I peeked my head out to bid goodbye to my mom and sister and saw their faces dropping. It's going to be hard for them, my dad said as I settled down in the car. Very, even for me, I replied. But you can do it. Remember, we're all proud of you, he said and continued driving. I played some radio and rested my head on the windows embracing my city, which I am going to miss a lot while I'm gone. This situation arrived because I became a victim of bullying a month back in my old school. Not like it happened only a month back. The senior boys, a group of them used to bully me, and some more like me who can't fight for themselves and were easy targets for them. The subtle bullying started years back with minor pranks like throwing water on me, sharing my funny pictures on social media, but it became worse by last month where they threatened to tear my notes right before exams if I didn't pay for their meals. That's the first time I fought back, and then all of us were called by the principal, which they went ugly for a week as the seniors were able to get themselves out of it until one of the staff caught them, and the truth was out. My parents got really worried, and we all decided it's for the best that I change schools now and move outside the city, to the place where my dream college is located, so it's easier for me in the future. After half an hour of the journey full of thoughts and laughter with my dad, I reached the airport. You will be all right, my father said, and it was time for me to go. Thanks, Dad. Bye, take care. After that, I walked in the airport and I got my check-in done. As I was walking in, I noticed a bookstore. I decided to walk in and buy myself a parting gift, so I bought this book I wanted from Long, Atomic Bomb. I liked reading until I barely got time to read books anymore. After three hours, my plane landed and I collected my suitcase. I booked a cab to the hostel. It was already evening and I was feeling very hungry. But I thought of settling in the dorm first, taking a shower and then eating. In an hour or so, the cab stopped in front of this beautiful building that was so big it looked like another city on its own. The area was so full of red and white buildings, trees, benches, and a good crowd, even though it was late in the evening. I went to the receptionist and got my room keys. It was a sharing room, as that's all that was available at the last moment, so I took it, gladly. I was excited to meet my roommates and know what kind of friends I will be making. I was shocked or surprised. I don't know but what I saw was completely unexpected. A guy in my room. I'm guessing my roommate is in my room, with a girl on top wearing a green ID card, which you get in final year, so I'm guessing she's a senior. Both making out with each other. Who are you? I heard the guy say. Uh, Carrie, I'm sharing this room, I replied back. Oh, guess I have a partner now. Hi, I'm Ben, he replied back. The girl was still sitting on him. Carrie, if you don't mind, we're in the middle of something, she said. Oh yeah, um, I will just keep this in, I said, and kept my bags inside and ran right after that, closing the door behind me. That was so embarrassing, I thought to myself, and started food hunting before my stomach made any more noises. I found a local pizza shop and went there. After waiting for some ten minutes, I tasted one of the best pizzas ever. As I was eating, I noticed some Polaroids on the wall, out of which one looked familiar. I've seen his face somewhere, I thought to myself, and then sudden realization hit me. That it's Ben, my roommate. Well, I just met in the craziest way possible. Surprisingly, he looked like an innocent teen boy who was enjoying his life, but not in the way I just witnessed. After finishing my business, I walked back to my dorm, hoping their makeout session would be over by now. I gave the door a knock, but got no reply. I knocked again, but same, no reply. So I opened the door and the room was empty. Finally, I said to myself, and jumped straight to my bed, falling asleep. Hey, new kid. I heard someone continuously calling my name and many other things which... I thought were my dreams until I felt someone shaking my body, making me open my eyes all of a sudden, only to realize it's Ben from last night. School didn't even start and you're already sleeping like this, he said. Ugh, I was jet lagged, I replied. Alright, can you keep yourself on your side? I almost fell twice because of your suitcase near my bed, he said, and I realized all my bags were scattered around the room. I got up and arranged everything. Done, I'm sorry for the mess, I told him. It's alright, have some breakfast before it gets over. We will decide on room terms, after that, he said, and left, leaving me confused. What room terms? I thought about it, and went down for breakfast. Weeks have passed by since then. I'm sitting here on my bed, annoyed, looking at the paper posted on the wall saying the rules of the room. I had no idea last week that he would be an arsehole to this level. On my second day in the room, he sat me down and divided the entire room. So keep all your stuff on your side of the room. Don't touch my bed or my desk. You may find stuff you don't like. If any girl comes looking for me, tell them I'm never coming back or better just ignore them. 
Don't put loud alarms in the morning. I'm fine missing the first hours, but not ruining my sleep. And feel free to use your side of the room for any sort of enjoyment you do. This list goes on and on, and it's annoying me right now because I don't have enough space to keep my books, as the common space is taken by him to decor his shoe collection, which I don't know is for who to impress as the only people coming in this room are chicks, who I'm sure don't get time to look at it as they're busy literally eating each other out and engrossing me. I just dump everything on the table again and get ready for my class. We had our selections of classes yesterday and I'm hoping I find something interesting in history class, as I'm not really fond of the subject but had no other option but to take it. I left the room without waking my dear roommate up as per his request. I reached my class 10 minutes early and picked a seat that was not too back and not too front to keep me out of the teacher's questions and interactions. Slowly, everyone started coming to class. I met Joel last week in other classes we share. He is a sweet man and we started connecting as he also shifted for his term from his hometown. We planned to discover a new place to eat together. I was happy to see him in my class. Soon the bell rang and the teacher entered. He was a man in his mid-fifties, dressed up in the dark brown clothes, perfectly suiting the look of a history teacher. As I sat and opened my book, I heard a familiar voice. May I come in, sir? Oh, guess who it is, Mr. Luis, teacher said, making it look like he knows Ben from ages. Guess I will have to get habitual to you interrupting me again between classes like you did in previous years. He passed the comment making Ben laugh and enter the class. What is he doing here? I thought to myself, ignoring the fact that he was walking towards me. He walked past me, sitting on a seat behind me. Hey, Rumi, he said. OMG, I groaned and rolled my eyes, still angry with the room partition. What are you doing in history? Is it not too out of fashion for you? I replied back, with a hint of sarcasm. What? No, I love history. It's my second love, he whispered close to my ears. I was shocked when I heard the first sentence. Never have I ever expected this from him. But good to hear that. Who's your first love, then? I asked him. Me. Duh, he replied with his cockiness and settled back. I waited for the class to get over, but the time was going extremely slow. In another 20 minutes, I heard the bell rang and smiled happily, stretching my hands and legs. I felt a pat on my shoulder and turned back. Hey, Rumi, there's a party tonight at my friend's house. You should come, he said. Firstly, I don't know how to respond because I haven't been to many parties before. Uh, no thanks. I'm fine here, I said, trying not to sound rude. What? No, you gotta come. You will get to meet new people, which is important for you. You're new here, anyways. Don't be a bore, he said, taunting me. I'm not a bore, and I will think about it, I said, and left from there. I kept thinking about whether I should go or not. Ben is right that I need to know more people because these days, here, honestly sucked alone. Even though my old school doesn't carry a lot of good memories, I still had people around me who I could call my best friends and have fun with. So I guess Ben convinced me to go to the party. I pulled my phone out and texted Ben, saying, send me the address. He replied immediately with a smiley and the address. In these weeks, I have realized Ben can be unpredictable, sometimes in a good way. Like using a smiley. Ben. Predictable. Keeping my shoes straight most of the nights. Unpredictable. Or maybe just his love for shoes. I finished the rest of my classes and went back home to get ready for the party. I asked Ben if I could call a friend and he sent thumbs up, reminding me of my dad. Which made me call him as it's been a week since we spoke. Hey dad, I said. How's your college going? Have you made any friends yet? He asked, concerned. Yes, in fact, I'm going to a party in a while. Sure, I'll be making some there. That is great. Make sure you look your best there, he said. While we laughed, I cut the call with a happy mood and got ready. As he said, I picked my best looking clothes, which is a beige striped shirt and blue white jeans with a Nike that Ben complimented the day he saw them. I booked a cab and reached there. To my surprise, it wasn't that crowded. Maybe it was too early. I couldn't locate Ben anywhere either. I started having second thoughts of going back home as I was standing in front of the gate until I heard a horn noise and I turned behind to see Ben. I didn't know you were this excited to come to the party, that you came an hour early, he said. I thought your text said 7pm, I replied in sarcasm. Yeah, but 7 doesn't actually mean 7 when it comes to parties, he said. Guess I did a good job calling you here. You will learn more about parties. Thanks for your valuable knowledge, I replied. But now that you're here, come help us set up, he said, and I agreed. Not like I had anything else to do anyways. I walked into his luxurious looking house, which had almost everything in large size. The TV, sofa, table, etc. Hey, everyone exclaimed as they saw Ben. Here, meet my friend, Carrie. He introduced me to his friends. Hey, Carrie. Have a lot of fun, mate, they said. Yeah, thanks for having me. Alright, let's set some fun games, boys, said Ben. We started arranging a bunch of games. 
Devin and Payne were preparing booze. Ben passed me some mugs and ping pong balls to set up. Done, I replied. Yeah, how about a match then, he said, throwing a ping pong ball that went straight into the mug, surprising me. But what took him by surprise was when I hit the aim to my shot, and it went in all three times, which he wasn't expecting. Whoa, whoa, Rumi, where did you learn that? Practice it in the dorm or bathroom? He said laughing, being a complete arsehole. But I was having fun. Come to think of it, he is not that bad either, except when it comes to his things and dorm rules, which still makes me mad. An hour later, the house looked completely different. There are nearly 50 people in the house. Some took their corners to make it out. I'm sure Ben was one of the corners. Some were by the pool and some were trying to play ping pong and falling, making me grin. I walked by the pool with coke in my hand and I never had alcohol before, nor I was planning to have any today. I don't want to make a joke out of myself. As I was staring, looking at everyone, laughing and playing around, I noticed Ben dancing nearby, not surprised with another random girl. But my eyes fell on another familiar figure that was the senior girl from the first day in the dorm. She made eye contact with me and I immediately looked away, but a minute later I saw her coming towards me with a bunch of other friends. Hey little Carrie, she said, which sounded like an insult to me, but I kept it cool. Hey, remember me, she said, and I nodded, my head giving a small but fake laugh. Join us. What are you doing alone? She said. No, no, I'm fine here. You can all continue, I replied back. Hey, no, it's our party, and we have to make sure everyone's enjoying it. Wait, I will call the party to you, she said, and called for your other friends who all entered with cups and bottles on their hands full of alcohol. Guys, this is Carrie, our friend. He's new to the school, and we need to make sure he enjoys it here, she said, and everyone started hooting. Okay, let's play some games, some guy said. Yes, we're going to blindfold a person, and he takes a spin. Whoever he points at, and he stops, has to do something another guy at the back suggested, and everyone agreed. It didn't seem bad, so I agreed along. I thought it's a good way to get to know more people, and it should be fun. But before that, someone offered me alcohol, which I refused. But everyone started asking me to drink and started screaming my name in excitement, even though I kept refusing. They didn't stop, and they peer pressured to make me break my own promise. Okay, just one glass though, I said, and I took the glass of beer. I took the first sip and immediately regretted it. So bitter, I said, and I heard a few of them chuckling. It may be like that at first, but keep going. You'll like it, a guy said, holding the cup close to my mouth. And I started drinking it, while everyone screamed around me, hyping me to gulp it down, which I did. I shook my head out of disgust at first, but then it felt good, and I felt heat rushing through my body. Whoa, Carrie, you're gonna have so much fun now, the girl said. Brandy, a senior with pale skin and curly hair, came in the middle of the circle we were all standing in. Lara, the senior girl Ben was making out with, took a piece of cloth and blindfolded Brandy. He started spinning around and stopped at the music, pointing at Duke. Okay, Duke, you have to peek Jenna on your shoulders and jump in the pool with her, Ramson said, and everyone hyped him up. He went near the pool bench and spoke to the girl, which I assume was Jenna. While they were in the middle of the conversation, he picked her up on his shoulders and she looked surprised and jumped in the pool. All of us screamed his name and laughed. It did seem wrong thinking from Jenna's side, but it was fun too. Okay, again. This time Brandy landed on Lara. I dare you to kiss Carrie, Duke said, soaking up wet. What? No, I said. Come on, it's a dare and I can't lose, Lara said. Wait, I know what will help, she said, and she took a sip of vodka. She walked towards me and I realized what she was going to do. I kept saying no, but she held my face and kissed me, spilling vodka in my mouth which also fell all over my shirt. I had heard everyone hyping our names the loudest. I opened my eyes and saw Ben stop dancing and he was looking at me seriously. I pushed Lara, feeling really uncomfortable. Plus the vodka made me feel like puking. I started having some flashbacks because of the forced kiss and realized what was happening and how come all the seniors came to me to party and I couldn't stay there anymore. I excused myself and walked away. I stood in the main gate and booked myself a cab which took 10 minutes to come. It was hard to control the urge not to puke as I was disgusted with what had happened back inside. The cab came and I rushed back home. I opened the dorm room and plopped straight into my bed. Next morning, I woke up panicking with heavy breaths, only to realize I was having a nightmare. I saw Ben was back home and he was sleeping on his bed, except his bed was now closer to mine, and he was sleeping facing me with hardly an arm's distance between us. I thought maybe it's some stunt he tried pulling after getting drunk. I was on the verge of carrying on from all that happened yesterday and decided to call my sister as she always helped me when I used to get nightmares before. 
I called her and told her everything and how it reminded me of what had happened in my old school. I started sobbing but tried keeping my volume low so Ben wouldn't wake up. As I knew, she helped me calm down and told me not to take it too seriously and stay away from them. After talking to her for nearly half an hour, I cut the call and went to get fresh. I came out of the washroom to notice Ben sitting on his bed with his messy hair all over his forehead. Let's go have breakfast, he said it for the first time. One of the room rules was never wake up after he drinks, but here he was up on his own and offered to have breakfast. I was feeling a bit hungry, so I agreed, and we went to eat. He got me coffee saying, this will help. I'm not sure how it will help with what, but I accepted the kind gesture, which is rare from Ben. After that, we got ready and left for class together, another surprising thing for me. On our way to history class, I saw Duke and Brandy walking towards us. As they saw me, the Duke raised his hand to wave me, and Brandy started walking fast, coming near me. My steps were becoming slow, as I didn't know what to do, but the last thing I wanted right now was to see any of them. All of a sudden, I felt Ben's arms around my shoulders, and he started running slowly along with me. Come on, we'll be late for class, he said, and we escaped Duke and Brandy. I was glad for that, but I didn't understand why he said that, as there were still five minutes left for class. Ben's behavior towards me became very soft and different from what it was before. Not just then, but he also helped me get away from seniors when I saw them in the canteen. Or when they tried coming to talk to me, Ben would appear all of a sudden. When Lara met me on near the school ground and was hardly a feet away from me, I got a call from Ben, and once again, he pulled me out of that situation. It's been like that since last month, and one more thing. I didn't realize that I was falling for this side of his. I didn't know I was bisexual. I have dated a girl before, and completely enjoyed it. But since last month, I found myself being attracted to Ben which often made me think that I am bisexual, maybe. We were all hanging out in the canteen with Ben and his close friends and Joel. When David jokingly asked him, are you even going to date someone or just fool around girls all the time? I'm just trying to have some fun, okay? Don't be jealous, Ben replied. Bro, at this rate, leave a girlfriend. You won't even get a boyfriend, Duke said. I don't know where I got the confidence from, but I did something I didn't know I was capable of doing. I held Ben's hand as I was sitting next to him. Who knows, maybe he will get a boyfriend, I said aloud enough for everyone to hear, and I could hear silence spreading across. Dude, what the fuck, no, Ben said, removing his hand from me harshly. It broke my heart to see his reaction this way, but it's Ben. How did I forget? This is exactly how he is, and it doesn't take a lot of time for him to go to his rude stage. Oh, I was just joking, I lied to save myself from embarrassment. Yeah, no way, Ben said, and everyone gave a small awkward laugh. That was pretty much the last time Ben and I spoke properly. It went worse than how it was in the first week. We only spoke to each other when it was something very serious or he wanted to bring another girl to make out with, so I gave the room to him. I'm sure somewhere he realized I wasn't joking that day, and I am in fact at ease that he knows. I wasn't joking because I have fallen for him, but I can't force it on him, so it's better if we continue maintaining our spaces until I'm over him. It was late at night, nearly around 11pm, and Ben was still not home. I kept waiting for him in case anything happened, but I was tired from all the schoolwork and activities, so I couldn't keep my eyes open for longer. As I was about to doze off, I heard the door open with a bang, which woke me up immediately. I saw a lousy figure walking without any balance towards me. I realized it's Ben, and he is drunk. I got up to hold him before he fell and put him on the bed. I took his shoes off and kept him exactly how he likes. He kept saying something, but it was completely inaudible. Why? Why did you drink so much, Ben? I sighed. For you, I heard him say, which left me in a trance. You should sleep, I said. I was about to walk towards my bed until I felt a strong grip on his hands, on mine, which pulled me toward him, making me fall next to him, on his bed. His hands reached for my waist, pulling me close, and placed his leg on top of mine, completely trapping me. Ben, you're drunk. Please, leave me and go to sleep, I said softly. No, I know all this well. I didn't talk to you much, but now I will listen, he said. While my thoughts were mixed at this point, Firstly, he said without wasting another second, I felt his lips on mine, warm and soft. I was shocked and my body froze. My eyes went wide and I didn't know what to do until he pulled back and said, kiss me back. I know you want to. I melted my heart immediately and I kissed him back. Now listen to me, he said and I nodded. Sorry I acted that way. I got scared and I didn't know what to do, but the thing is, I like you. I have from a while, but I didn't know I could like a guy, which kept me confused and I acted the way I did. I understand, I said, nodding my head, looking at his eyes. 
then also understand that I am incapable of living without you anymore. These days were the hardest for me, which made me realize how much I like you. So please forgive me and be mine. Everything you sent sent butterflies to my stomach. I overheard your conversation with your sister the other day. And just know from now on, I will protect you from anyone and anything that tries to hurt you. My face went straight hearing this, but I wasn't mad. It is sweet of him to say all that, and he actually did help me stay away from them in the past. This has been unpredictable as always. But again, I had to keep in mind that this can all mean nothing because he is drunk. But I was happy for this moment. I tried pulling myself away, but his strong grip held me tightly. So I gave up and slept there, in his arms. It was nice and warm, but I was ready to face his cold side in the morning. I woke up the next morning, still in the same position I slept in. I looked at Ben, sleeping with his hair all over his forehead. I creased his cheek, then opened his eyes, making me stop. Good morning, he said with a smile, and I replied back. Yesterday you were drunk, and, and I told you how much I liked you, he said. And I nodded, ready to hear otherwise. I know, I remember, and just so you don't think it's all a joke, I will repeat everything again, sober, he said, and told me the words he told me last night. I like you too, Ben. I'm so happy right now, I told him and kissed him. Conclusion Ben and Carrie started dating each other secretly, but made it public a month later. Some were clearly disappointed, but some genuine friends were happy and supportive. Ben made history classes interesting for Carrie by secretly holding hands with him and offering him kisses. Carrie told him how mad he was with the room rules and Ben tore the rules paper. They both fit with each other perfectly and enjoyed every moment without worrying about anything else. The End Do you think Ben's behavior towards Carrie will always remain like this? Or will this bring differences between them? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.